Are you tired of feeling like a clown when you go into your Splatoon 3 games? Do you ever wish you could play a bit better? No matter what your favorite mode is in Splatoon 3, the ability to understand what you're doing right and wrong will help you play better. Nintendo finally added a brand new way to be able to look into your replays and understand exactly what's going on. Directly before recording this video, I played the most okay game of Clamblitz. It wasn't very fast paced, there wasn't too much going on, but it actually makes for the perfect example for what I want to show you. Play a replay like usual. I'm gonna go through this game piece by piece and show you how you can benefit from doing this on your own. All you have to do is press R. Whoa, new chart. This is the new thing. Added on in December of 2023, this is the new replay screen. It's a granular move by move example of what's exactly happening in the game. For clam blitz, you get some really good information. Notice how as people pick up their clams in the game, it actually shows them on the match. I'm the end zap. I'm on the bottom left in the blue. Anytime that I get splatted, you'll see that my icon goes black. So you can see all eight of my deaths. <laughs> You can see them as I run through here. You can see who is carrying the clams. You can see how often I used my special. I used my special three times. And you can see those three times because they're highlighted in this little tiny bar on the bottom. You can see I used it here. You can see I used it there. And you can see I used it there. Each of the four players on each team have their own horizontal line on this screen dedicated to all of their actions. You can see that I don't die in this game up until this 350 mark right here. Until then, I was always alive. You can see that I didn't really do any pushing the first game. The first minute of this game seems to be pretty slow, you know? I have a lot of clams, but I don't have anything with them. If I wanted to go into this and see uh, what, the, what the heck is going on, why didn't anything happen? You can see that in this first minute, while there's not much that goes on, there's suddenly this huge wave of yellow splats that happens right here. And almost immediately after, we push. If I want to see what happened here in particular that caused this, I can go ahead. I can find a nice place to start. Let's say, maybe right where I use my tactic cooler. And I can see what I was doing. Did I help with this push? The game will push ahead to that exact point. It will watch me because I am the host, although I can choose to watch anybody else. I throw my cooler down, I have seven clams on me, and it's obvious I want to make a push. I see two players over here and I go for this hero play where I actually do get both these players. I feel like there are times where I, I wouldn't get away with this. I push in, but I don't actually grab an eighth clam. I kind of trusted my teammates to come in with me, and they do. They don't give me a clam though because luckily I find a few up top. Now, here's where things get a little dicey. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that last clam in, and then I'm gonna immediately back out and ditch my team to go look for some more clams. In the time period that I go and do this, it weakens my team's push, it kinda, kinda ends. There could have been a bit more going on here, as there were clams on the map. Not many, but at least a couple. It's something that I can look into, and in the future, maybe try to be a little more pushy to keep things going. Honestly, I'm happy with my decision-making skills here because I purposely targeted the player that I knew I could actually catch. I got the bow player first. If I was going to trade with the shot, it would have been okay, but I wanted to make sure I got something out of that engagement. One of the most fun things out of seeing this bar is that you can really tell which team is having the better special coordination. You can see that we use like three specials all around here. You can see they use three specials all around here, but the closeness is what matters. Like, here's the point you can see right before the yellow team gets this very strong push. We can go to the point where almost our entire team is alive. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe right here, before they use that first hammer. Out of curiosity, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna watch myself here. I wanna see the play from the side of the bow player. If I wanna change my perspective, I'm gonna hold down the ZL button and then press B. You can see it on the top right there. So they're gonna go in for this push here. There's already two players down, so all the bow player does, the bow player gets me, which opens up a great opportunity for them to keep painting. What they wanna do is they're providing pressure right now. They're not going for the splats. They're just making sure the ground is covered so their teammates can move forward and we cannot. If you wanna understand an opponent, how a different weapon works so you can combat it in the future, 
Watching somebody else do a very good job with their weapon can help you in the future avoid being splatted like that again. This bow is very good at position control. They want to make sure that people are forced to move back when they come in. What seems like a lot of nothing based on what you see up top becomes a lot of something when you actually look at the chart on the bottom. You can see that in this period of time here, there's a lot more splats that go on on my team, the blue team, than on the yellow team. They have a very strong control of their area of the map, which renders us unable to push. You can see that what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to build an opportunity by throwing in these bombs, trying to catch a pick. But until I do so, I can't move in. I know that the bow is there. The bow is forcing me and my teammates to be displaced, so we can't actually engage together. I try to go for this pick here, but don't get it. And in that time where I'm separated from my teammates, two more of them get splatted. And I can't just kind of push up into them. It's going to lead me to getting clocked. So I try to jump on out. I, I misclick here <laughs> and end up in basically the same place. And in that window of time, they get the opportunity to make another push. However, this push ends up hurting them as three players go down. The last player is going to be this sploosh, which you see ends up getting splatted, meaning that everybody has just been reset to their side of the map. I take advantage of this and I try to run on in to cause a quick switch of the lead here. And actually, I do get it. This was a very risky play though, because they had already taken some time to respawn in and could have really hurt me. But having a quick reaction to something going on in the game can at times make the difference. But why was my push so risky? Here's the problem. When, when I made that push, yes, we got the lead. Awesome. Pat on the back. Yippee. Problem? If you notice on the bottom right here, we kind of we kind of all got splatted. And the problem here is even though I had my cooler out and I'm sure it helped to prevent my teammates from losing all of their specials, you notice that they have a lot more specials in this last bit of the game. They had good pushing opportunity. Look, we all even get splatted basically again before the game is over. They could have taken this game back. And seeing why they didn't is very important. I'm going to watch this from the perspective of the player that when I scroll to the right here, I see picks up the power clamp. What stopped them from being able to get that clam in, especially if we died a total of eight times after since we got the lead and they only died three. So here's the Forge Pro player. They managed to get two very strong picks and the players running on in here, kind of slowing down this push with the clam. It's only because the Neo Splash has like a split second to run on in after this Forge dies that we even get that lead in the first place. The Forge reacts very quickly though to this. They have the range to quickly go ahead, they grab this power clam and they're like, okay, I need to get this clam from one side of the map to the other. Their teammates trusted the Forge with bringing this clam over and the Forge did a great job by doing this. They manage to stay back, they build a good opportunity, they get their Booyah Bomb, and they throw it in a place where they know that our team wants to be. They get a couple of great picks here, and they try to hide on the side, and oh no! Oh no! That's so sad. I, I didn't even know that. I, I, stra I straight up did not know that. I You know, it, it should make sense seeing this splat right here now, but I didn't even think about that. I'm curious now from my perspective if they would have been able to get the lead. The question I'm asking myself here is, did I play this good enough where if that Forge Pro didn't fall, would I have been able to fix the problem? There's currently nine seconds on the clock. We know at this point, the Forge Pro is making their way around with that big clam. I'm standing in the place where I know the enemy team wants to go to bring that clam in. We know for a fact that over the course of this game, nobody on the enemy team has tried to push across the top right. And honestly, with my weapon, I would not have been able to stop them from doing that anyway, given what they have. So I choose to stand here and paint over this lip that so anytime they try to push up around the corner, they're going to get hopefully splatted or at least slowed down. The bow understands this. You can see the bow constantly firing at this hallway here, not even trying to get a pick. What they want is they want to make sure that their teammates have the best chance possible to run in with that clam. I mean, getting a pick would be nice, but I don't think that's their priority here. So with the Booyah Bomb active, I'm able to reposition just where this corner is to try and catch anyone who might have been pushed back by the Booyah Bomb that still wants to move in. I don't know because I know that I wasn't paying attention during this to who actually had the football. If I actually tried to fight the Forge Pro right here, I would probably get splatted. What happens here is I take a bit of chip damage from this whale. 
and the whale forces me to run upward and put me in a really bad spot. I should have backed up here. But because I'm a shorter range, like, shooter type weapon, my thought at this moment was, oh, okay, I've killed the bow player beforehand in this exact spot. I could probably do it again. I go for this hero play here without paying attention to the fact that the shot player this time, unlike the last time I tried to fight the bow, the shot player is in front of the bow, providing them with great coverage. So you can guess what happens immediately next. Bye-bye. I get caught up by the whale. Actually, I get caught up by the tri-stringer. Oh, I thought I got caught by the whale there. Oops. So now you have this moment here. You've got... So now you've got this moment here. You've got the Forge Pro. They're using the Booyah Bomb. We know they're going to fall off the map, unfortunately, at the end. But I'm curious if what's left of my team would have been enough, based on what I did, to still be able to win the match. So my reaction is to immediately try to push forward. I go through the path of least resistance here. And you can see that actually everybody's got splatted. Everybody died. I would not consider this a very strong defense on my end. I would think to myself for future gameplay that I wouldn't really want to overextend at the very end of a match like that. The overtime buzzer can make you do a lot of things that sometimes you can regret ending up doing. If you want to get better at Splatoon, you should be aware of what your strengths and your weaknesses are. From this game, I can see that my reaction time to things happening on the enemy team side is very good. I help push here after I get this, like, triple. I immediately go for basket. Same thing happens over at the end of the match. A few players go down here, I immediately react, and I help get the basket. I hope this quick analysis helps you. Other things you can look out for, both good and bad, can include when a push starts. How long does it take for you to react? Do you change what you're doing when an enemy team pushes and you're not there? Are you choosing to work towards the objective when you see multiple players are splatted on the enemy team? Are your specials being used approximately at the same time as your teammates? Check out the footage of your specials and see if your teammates, via their perspectives, are benefiting from them. Again, you can see someone else's perspective by pressing ZL and then the button that corresponds with that teammate. When you and at least one other teammate get splatted, how do you react? Do you push in quickly and get splatted again? This is called trickling in and can lead not only to a lot of downtime, but a lot of special loss. You can see in the match I covered that the yellow team had significantly more special usage, especially in the middle of the match, which is how they really held control. Thank you for watching, and I hope you see improvement in your own play. Have a good one.